welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Kevin McKnight, and I'm glad you're joining us for today's broadcast. Marriage Week continues here on Word Alive, and you are going to be meeting my wife today. Some of you probably have no idea who she is. Well, you're going to meet this lovely lady in just a little bit and have an opportunity to get acquainted with her, and we'll be sharing a little later in the broadcast on the subject of marriage, and we're actually going to tie our first guest into that discussion, whether he knows that or not. And we're going to have some discussion today that we hope will be beneficial to you and be a blessing to your family as well. Also, as I mentioned, our guest that will start the broadcast out with us is Bill McDonald, missionary to Ecuador, and we're going to be talking with him uh, about the great work that God is doing there in the nation of Ecuador and how it's literally reaching out around the world. You do not want to miss this broadcast. And of course, I'm standing here with our prayer partners, which gives you an opportunity to call us all through the hour. And you can call right now. They're ready to take your calls for prayer. And we're going to be praying over these requests before we go off the air today and believing God with you for the miracle that you need in your life. Now, because of our theme for the latter part of the broadcast today, I'd like to encourage you, if you have a need in your family and your marriage, give us a call. We'll especially be praying for you today because we know God's got a great plan for your life, for your family, and we want you to be blessed. So you stay tuned. We've got a lot coming up, and we'll be back in just a few moments. The late sun is sinking fast And my race is nearly run My strongest trials, they now have passed The race is almost run Oh, come the angel band Come and around me stand Bear me away on your snow-white wings To my eternal Spirit softly sings The holy ones Behold they come And I hear the sound of wings
your snow white wing to my eternal home. Um, back around 2003, um, my wife came to me and said that uh, she was wanted a separation, that she could no longer put up with my uh, attitude and the way I was acting and treating her. I wanted to have somebody to share my life with, share my joys with, share my hobbies with, to be my friend, to be my lover, to share everything. And uh, that didn't happen. Um, I had been verbally abusive. Uh, was very much had a lot of sarcasm, a lot of lying, a lot of deception, a lot of pride and selfishness, uh, a lot of anger. Um, I was a, I was a pretty miserable person. I just had enough. I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take the mental and verbal abuse anymore. And I was so mad at God because I was like, God, I gave you everything that I have. You know, why is my marriage such a mess? Why is my life such a mess? So I was very angry at the Lord, which led me to telling my husband that I wanted a divorce. Well, at first I did my normal thing and I cussed and I sweared and I put her down and uh, did a lot of verbal abuse and uh, realized after a short period of time that that wasn't going to work. Uh, then I said, well, you know what, she's always been trying to get me uh, to uh, read the Bible and, and, and do things like that. So I think the best thing for me to do is uh, I'll start reading the Bible. So I went and I asked her, I said, uh, Kel, um, I need a Bible, I want to start reading the Bible. <sighs> and uh, I couldn't, couldn't tell you exactly when, but at some point when I was reading the Bible, um, God got a hold of me, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't put it down. That was the beginning of the restoration of our relationship. We have been on an amazing journey. God has completely softened my heart and he's given me a new love for my husband a new respect for my husband uh, we're friends now we hang out together we'll go to the beach or he'll go shopping with me which is uh, it's pretty neat along with this being the best time of, of my life it's it's the best time for our marriage um, our marriage of uh, not that we don't have struggles we still do um, we're able to uh, uh, work, work through our problems and, and the biggest part of that is God. You know, back before, I, I didn't have anyone to go to when we would, would have issues, but now the first thing I do is go to God and ask Him to show me my part and, uh, and, and what we need to do to uh, reconcile whatever we're going through. I'm living the dream. I have the husband that I prayed for. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God resurrected our marriage and renewed it. And He is an awesome God. All right, we welcome you back. And we have been this week talking about marriage, and we're going to be doing that. So I encourage you to stay tuned. We're going to be taking some questions, and we're going to be just sharing uh, from our hearts. And to do that, I'd like to introduce uh, the most special lady in my life, and that's my wife, Robin. She's right here. It's good to have you on the program, Thank huh? Thank you. It's good to be here. She was a little bit resistant. She's a little camera shy, and uh, you, but you mustered up the strength to do it. I did. And, and I'm here. She's here for you. <laughs> I just want you to know that she's here for you. And Bill, sorry to keep you waiting, but it's priorities. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll get in line behind this gal any day of the week. But it's good to have you with us, Bill and McDonald. You, and you can tell mine even resisted more. She, <laughs> she didn't come. I know. She flat told me she was not, not going to come on. It. And I guess to seal the deal, she just didn't come at all. She didn't, she didn't show up at all. Well, Connie, we're on to you. We know what's going on here. But uh, no, it, we, we are so glad to have Bill with us. Bill's a very special friend. and. Uh, of course, been a big part of Evangel through the years. Uh, his, I don't, you know, we don't want to take all the time to repeat the story, but I think most people know yeah. this is your home church. You That's got right. saved here. Yeah, and yeah. we were uh, we were here the day this television station went on the air, and the day we dedicated this building. And uh, 
we were around here when you guys met. I mean, that's, that's right. how long yeah. we've been around. <laughs> yeah, we were all friends before Robin and I were married. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> Working together. Yeah. God's doing great things. But, Bill, uh, just to recap quickly, uh, you know, I remember that, that prayer room we had up there yeah. at, at the, what we call the barn. Yeah. Uh, it was back behind the baptistry. It's where our gymnasium is now on that right. world map uh, that was there. and people would go back there and pray and God really did something in your life there. Yeah, it was, uh, I guess, Kevin, it was in the late 80s and um, Connie and I were serving on staff. Our daughter Leah, she was in the first grade and uh, we were just, uh, they, they were wonderful years uh, here at Evangel and very, very uh, involved, lots of work as you all recall. Um, and then um, uh, quite busy uh, and my family's from Louisville. My, aunts and uncles and mom and dad and sisters and everybody were all from here and um, but uh, we had come to a place I guess in life where we sensed that uh, we weren't quite uh, being utilized uh, to 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 what excuse me to what God had called us to do um, great church great experience at our home church but there was something in our hearts uh, it's like I'm like I was made for something else, mm. uh, something different than this. Although well, what where we were was good, I couldn't <laughs> complain. But there's something missing, and maybe some of you can identify with that. Well, I began to really just seek God, just pray, and spend a lot of time in that prayer room. Sometimes people think, well, prayer is a wasted effort, but I tell you, it'll it'll give you a, it'll give you direction. It'll give you a reason, uh, I say it'll give you a reason to live and it'll give you a reason to die, something you'll die for. And it was there that uh, I sensed a call uh, of God to be a missionary. I mean, just a place in time. And now we spent the last uh, 25 years in a foreign country and, and my grandchildren have been born overseas because of that incident uh, over uh, 25 years ago. Yeah, your whole family's involved in the effort oh, gosh, and yeah. uh, the work of God there yeah. and what's going on. Yeah. Now, you went there, and, and as a missionary, you had no contact. You had, I mean, you no. just went to, to a foreign land, there cold we turkey. There go. Boy, yeah. There. Well, I sensed uh, very much a, a divine direction. I, I tell you, if, if, if God doesn't call you, uh, then circumstances can remove you. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we sense that we were called to this. And I know some people don't quite understand what that means, but boy, it, once you experience it, you know you've got it. it, it you know, it's more than just an opportunity. It's more than uh, an invitation. Uh, it, it, it's more than a contract. <clears throat> There's an inner call that I'm called to do this. And, and that's hard. It's, it's easy uh, to run from uh, problems. It's hard to run from the call. And so, yeah, we went there sensing there was a call. And uh, we did have a wonderful sending agency, however. Our sending agency, our home church, stood with us. The day I, uh, Connie and I and Leah flew out of the Louisville airport, our pastor was there at the airport with us early in the morning and hand, me, uh, hand us all a little New Testament. He mm -hmm. said, may the word of God guide you every step. And so we were very much supported by our home church friends that stood with us. Some cried because we left and some cried because we were finally gone. But uh, we, uh, we had people who stood with us. And strong family. Strong, strong family who, who stood with us. Even though they didn't understand what we were doing, uh, you know, they, they stood with us. And so that made it uh, very doable. But we went to a place that we were not familiar with. And something read about in grade school, the Andes Mountains, uh, the, the, the Inca Empire the Quechua Indians, and uh, we're still there today. Yeah, and you work with a great worldwide missions organization that through is, the Assemblies of God. And, absolutely. Uh, but I, I know enough, having been around with you in those early days, that, uh, you know, they prepare you, they, they teach you some things, but basically you wind up there and yeah. just have to start making acquaintances. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know if people realize what a lot of missionaries yeah. do when yeah. they go somewhere where there's no groundwork already laid. Right. Oh, I tell you, it was, uh, I, I remember our first Christmas. It was a sad moment. Oh, my goodness. We, uh, uh, we decided to hang on to all the letters we had received, uh, the Christmas cards, open them Christmas morning. 
And oh my gosh, it was it, it was a snot blowing morning. I'm <laughs> telling you, we just cried and bawled. And um, no family, first time ever to be away from uh, family on, on Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And there we were in a place, and we just uh, we knew no one. Mm -hmm. We didn't know anyone. We had met uh, missionaries, but we were in a city where there were no uh, missionaries. And so we didn't, there was, yeah, that was it. So it was tough. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit. Yeah. A whole lot has happened. Yeah. It's a different story today, oh, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different story. It's quite amazing. Yeah, the, uh, the president comes and visits me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, literally, uh, the president of Ecuador, he, uh, when he comes to town, he comes over. And um, uh, the bishop uh, of the city comes to my, my home. And uh, God has given us great, great impact. And not only now in Cuenca, but all across Ecuador, and uh, and even now we're stretching across the United States, uh, across Latin America, and even into the United States. Now I, I'm probably painting the picture a lot bigger than it really is. You know, I'm just a peanut out there, but you know we're there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very significant, and that's happened through television ministry. Right. And uh, after you planted, I don't know, you maybe could give us an idea of yeah. how many churches. And uh, yeah, we I mean, planted somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 churches uh, if you add in what my kids have done the number reaches up around a hundred churches and now we're in some church planning efforts that are going to exceed those numbers uh, exponentially however uh, television has been very very powerful and so we um, uh, we built the television station there and now uh, you can uh, watch that television station here in the United States in seven different markets and uh, it continues to grow so it's now, it's not just the local station right. there in Cuenca, but it's on satellite. So we have, have a footprint out. that covers uh, all the way from uh, all of the Americas. Uh, however, uh, that, that, that being said, uh, there's not, everyone can't watch us. It's like any television or radio frequency. It can be in the room, but you have to have something to receive that with. So we're coming uh, down through, mostly through cable systems. And so um, every day right now, one a day, it's quite amazing, one a day are opening right now, new cable outlets. Uh, and this is what's really neat. Um, you don't, uh, oh, we're a commercial station. We're a Christian worldview station, but it's commercial. So people pay for advertising on our station, a lot like this station, mm -hmm. where people pay for advertising, but then we're able to present <laughs> Uh, the good news in a very parable uh, way and so we have good wholesome programming now we're we we uh, preach the gospel we we talk about uh, Jesus don't get me wrong but our news is not church news it's the city news but it's the best city news that if you want to get news about what's going on in our city go to our television station uh, but then we have some retro programming too and we got some bonanza in lucy you should hear lucy speak spanish it's the best thing ever yeah so we have some very good and then we have a lot of original programming we produce uh, if you can believe this we produce um, nine hours of programming a day wow we uh <laughs> we are we we're uh we move it's cranking it out oh boy it is a monster <laughs> Yeah, now because of the, the approach that you've taken, uh, you've had uh, uh, tremendous influence mm -hmm. now in the city. And, and even yeah. I think you received quite a compliment the other day. I heard you mention that someone suggested that that, that station, I forget who it was. I don't know if it was the president, the mayor, somebody said, turn to Uncion. Yes, uh, well, the, the president in one of his national um, television radio addresses, um, he does a state of the mu uh, state of the union every week. It's quite amazing. Um, it's um, it's a uh, three-hour program he does once a week. It's incredible. Uh, but he, uh, on more than one occasion now, he has said that all of our television stations should be like Uncion Television. Wow. Yeah, and uh, he said, uh, and it's because they're integrous. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, which would be our integrity. Oh, is that not an English word? I'm sorry. Is that, that may not even be English. I don't. Integris. I don't know a lot of Spanish, Integris. but I'm going to try to interpret for you today. We are a station of integrity. What do, what do I know? I, 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 I used to speak a little bit of English, and now after speaking Spanish, I don't know what I speak. 
<laughs> well, we're going to take a break real quick, and we'll be back. And when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, how that ministry on television, much like what we attempt to do here on Word Alive, is impacting families. And here's some stories of lives changed uh, because of their reaching out in prayer. And we'll tell you more about that in just a few moments, and we'll jump into our discussion then about marriage and we want to see your lives blessed today if you have a need in your life especially if it's in your marriage your family call us just give us your first names you don't need to tell us everything we just want to pray for you and we want to believe God to touch you so do that right now the numbers are on your screen you can call us locally at 962-9650 or outside the local area toll free 888-613-6080 We'll be right back, and I'll be telling you more of what's coming up. We have a Power Pack month of events and special things happening. Join with Dr. Bob and Margaret Rogers as they celebrate their 25th year as senior pastors at Evangel World Prayer Center at the Black and White Gala on Monday, November 4th, 2013 at the Marriott Louisville downtown. This elegant formal gala will be a luxurious evening of dining, entertainment, and featuring a silent auction to benefit the Lord's Kitchen. For more information on this event or to purchase your tickets, visit worldprayercenter.org forward slash gala. When you look back on a lifetime, you remember the things that sometimes you may have felt like they did not make a great difference. And then you realize the legacy you have created is more than you ever imagined. However you want your legacy remembered, we can help. You'll be remembered and honored at Louisville's newest Memorial Park, Crosswater Gardens Cemetery and Memorial Park, helping people just like you display their legacy for generations to come. Jesse Duplantis at Evangel World Prayer Center for one night only. See is a dream. If your members are bigger than your dreams, you're in trouble because you're not building a mental map on the road to divine destiny. I'm tired of some of these men jumping on their wives because they're getting a little fat. Why don't you grow some hair? Oh. oh. Thursday, October 17th at 7 p.m. at the Evangel World Prayer Conference Center, 6900 Billtown Road. For more information, visit worldprayercenter.org. Hallelujah Night, a night of family fun. The night starts with the illustrated sermon, Dorothy's Yellow Brick Road, a family-friendly adventure to the Wizard of Oz. Plus, parents, bring your children at 4.30 p.m. for a special pre-service meet and greet with the Wizard of Oz character. Then following the show, the grounds come alive with a petting zoo, free candy, and tons of food you can purchase. Mark your calendar now for Sunday, October 27th at 5 p.m. at the Evangel World Prayer Center and Hallelujah Night, a night of family fun. Experience the miracle healing like power of God in a one-day healing crusade I mean, with evangelist about, Billy Burke. About to get the upper hand. David said, this day has God delivered you into my hands. God's going to put your enemy in your hands. And, and then you're going to show mercy. Oh my God, the Holy Ghost. Somebody give him praise over this place. Oh! Billy Burke will be at Evangel Sunday, October on, 13th on, for one day only. Praise. Don't miss these great miracle services. Pick her up, pick her up, pick her you know, Billy Burke was miraculously healed as a child the ministry of Catherine Kuhlman. God did a, a literally a life-saving miracle uh, because he had a, a tumor in his body that was taking his life and God turned that around and that has really been in his life and his ministry ever since. And so he's going to be here just one day this Sunday and we encourage you to come out. All the services, 9 a.m. Billtown, 1030 Miners, 5 o'clock will be healing services and we invite you to be a part of that. And then you saw the other announcements of the upcoming events. There's some great things that are happening. Hallelujah night. And then we go into the, um, actually, let me back up. Since Bill's here, I should not be remiss to mention that on the 20th, we're having our missions banquet as a part of our Sunday evening service. So we invite you to come out uh, and be a part of that. It's going to be an international buffet. So that, that should be a fun thing to be a part of. Food from all over the world will be there. It'll actually be prepared here locally, so you're not shipping it in. <clears throat> but then we'll um, be sharing some great things with you about outreach and how you can be a part of it. And then, of course, you heard the Hallelujah Night. It's going to be fabulous, uh, fabulous night for the family. And I encourage you to come out. And that's all free for everyone to come and enjoy. And that night will be a blessed night. We're going to have the pr dramatic presentation and then outside all the events for the family. And then we're going to be celebrating on Sunday night, the first Sunday of November, 25 years, Pastor Bob and Margaret 
as our senior pastors. And that's an open event to everyone. And I would like to take just a moment here on the broadcast and speak to you. Some of you, uh, through the years in which they've pastored, have been a part of Evangel. Now maybe the Lord's led you out to another church or you're serving somewhere out else and working and uh, outside of Evangel. We want to invite you to come and be in that service that night. Just something special to celebrate with us, uh, having been a part of those 25 years, and enjoy that evening. And it'll be a great night. Uh, it's going to be a special night, and we hope you'll come. It'll be followed by a reception for everyone in attendance, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And just to bless them and honor them for the work they've done over these years. And then on Monday night, that's a different kind of event. It's also special, but because of uh, the way it's set up and laid out, it is a ticketed event. And if you'd like to be a part of that, you can go to our website, worldprayercenter.org, and forward slash gala, or you'll see the banner, and you can get more details concerning that. I'm happy to announce we've been able to extend uh, our original price for a couple more weeks. So if you'd like to jump in on that, uh, we give you the opportunity to do so. Well, let's get back to our discussion here on the broadcast. This week we've been talking about marriages and the other hosts have taken questions and topics and discussed them. And today we're glad to have with us Bill McDonald. He and Connie uh, left here many years ago to go and be missionaries to Ecuador. And you've heard us talking just a little bit about what God has done there. But I want to use really your ministry as a segue into our discussion because uh, as you open your church and also the television ministry and your, you actually have a prayer line. We have a mm -hmm. prayer line here. You have a very extensive prayer line yeah. uh, where people, when they sense something going on in their life, can call. Right. And how has that impacted marriages? And are the people of Ecuador different in marriage problems than maybe here in, in the United States? Th their, their problems are unique. They argue in Spanish. <laughs> that is the difference. Uh, the um, uh, issues uh, are issues just in a different context. And families are suffering across uh, Latin America. Uh, the very same issues we're dealing with here uh, are we're dealing with there. Uh, some of the very same uh, vices and addictions that are destroying families here, destroying families there. The percentages are a little different, but um, it, the, the same basic, basic issues and same root causes. And so um, obviously uh, having such a great need, uh, that is where we have had uh, a great amount of influence and impact in the city. And so uh, marriages is huge for us, and we deal with marriages every single day day. As a matter of fact, uh, I went back to school to get a degree in counseling uh, because of um, the, the, the issues that, are, that we're dealing with there. So UNCI on television is, um, is an opportunity to present uh, uh, the message of Christ to the family and, uh, and, bra and presenting the, the answers to those needs as well. So uh, families are in crisis uh, around the world. And there's an answer for uh, families in the church, in the Word of God, and through a relationship with Christ. I want to start out <clears throat> and use your family just for a moment, Bill. And then, Robin, you feel free to jump in uh, with any comments. But um, a lot of times in marriages, conflict arises because one spouse, and most often it's the man, uh, makes a major decision without really consulting with his spouse, his wife, to see you know, if they're in agreement about this. And when you were called to Ecuador, you faced a major, major decision. What did you do? How did you approach that so that it has turned out successfully? Well, I've been married to a redhead, a brunette, and a blonde. <laughs> <laughs> that, that issue was with a brunette. Um, and, <laughs> and you better clarify that. Yeah, I so better right now. This is marriage week. <laughs> if she returns from her hair appointment today, a blonde, I'm sticking with the blonde. So whatever. Um, no, it was a shock. And uh, I have had the tendency uh, just to be a bull in a china uh, shop, you know, um, and, and just saying this is the way we're going to go. 
and expecting or hoping that Connie will, will uh, be on board. And Connie's been very gracious, uh, very, very gracious with me throughout the years. Uh, but I think it's a matter of, of adding value to someone's life by asking them their uh, opinion and their influence. And so just by asking your opinion of something, your value rises. Just, just, by, just by talking with you, just by talking with someone, asking them the question, just asking the question, how was your day? Well, all of a sudden, your life interests me, and that causes your self-worth then to, to, to rise. And so uh, by referring, by asking, by the dialogue, I think we add value to one another. And so our, our, our self-esteem then uh, increases. And if your self-worth uh, or my spouse's self-worth uh, rises, it means that my overall net worth <laughs> is rising. Right. And so it's a value to both of us. Well, and when, when major decisions are being made, and I'll ask Robin, are you, do you feel better about the major decisions we make when you have some say-so in the matter? <laughs> I feel better when we communicate about it. And in fact, I was just reading in Ephesians yesterday about, uh, and we all hate this scripture, but wives submit to husbands. In the same verse, it's husbands love your wives. The same verse, children obey your parents. It's all done. God ordered that, but it's all done in love and in the right way. It's not over beating the wife and saying you're going to do this, but it's all done in love. And when it's done like that, it's an easier way. It's easy to say, uh, I'm okay if that's what you want to do I totally submit to that it's on your shoulders if it falls that type of thing but I'm going to support you and we're going to pray through it so yeah yeah I think we want to be involved in those which decisions. brings up a good point you it's good to strive for agreement yes you know and there's some things that uh, if there's not agreement it's not worth proceeding mm -hmm. but then there are some matters that just require a decision and then someone kind of has to to bear the load if that's the that, if that's the case absolutely how many times have i said you make the decision i'm not going to make the decision you're going to make it and i'm but i'm for you and uh, sometimes you agree to disagree but if you're in agreement to do that then it's a smooth selling right and that's in those rare moments i, yeah. I think most most decisions that we face all come down to us deciding together Absolutely. You know, what it's going to be. But yet, at the same time, if, if <coughs> I think if the woman says, you make the decision, but it's not sort of casting the responsibility of that decision upon the other person and the results of that decision, it's also to say, no, if it goes bad, I'm still with you. Yeah, right. You know, sometimes <laughs> when you make the decision, if it goes south, well, you're the one that did it. Yeah. No, that's right. it's not that. And I think um, in, in, in the same way, uh, regardless of who was the one who 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 end up having the idea or which decision uh, you went with uh, uh, the the man has to take responsibility and say uh, and, and, and if the bill correct collectors come knocking at the door <laughs> then then he needs to open the door and he needs to uh, show his face say you know I'm responsible uh, she may have made a decision, but <laughs> I'm taking responsibility for our family here. And I think every family is looking for that individual that will. And I understand there are a lot of single, fam, um, single parent families, and they have to bear that burden uh, on their own. And, and it is tough. It's not easy. But when there is uh, the man in the home that he can take responsibility for the decisions that are made mutually, I think that's very important. Absolutely. Now, going back to your decision to go on the mission field, for example, what impact did that have on your children? Was that, of course, Leah was your only child at that right. point, mm -hmm. uh, but how, how did she feel about that? Well, we, um, it, it was an interesting process. I, um, I, when Connie, I, Connie wasn't too excited about this. <laughs> and so um, I said, well, you know, let's just, if God can call me, he can call her. And so I dedicated uh, lots of time to prayer about that as well. And I said, you know, we're one flesh, and I'm not going without her. And uh, so I'll just leave it alone. And I allowed uh, just the Lord to speak to Connie. And so then, then that goes back to faith as well. So then once Connie 
said, you know, Billy, I, I'll, I'm going to go where you go. And, uh, and she gave me my most precise, uh, uh, precious gift I have in my life. I'll never give it away. I never uh, sell it. It's a little brass globe. And she attached a little note to that globe and said, I'll go anywhere in the world with you. Mm. Well, she didn't want to go. But then I tell you, uh, Robin, the reason we've stayed is because of Connie. Yeah. You know, when the tough moments came, she says, no, listen, God called us to this. And so, um, and then uh, we decided, Connie decided, well, if you can call us, can you call a first grader? And we just left that in God's hands. And one day, Leah is so, so sweet. She said, Daddy, I think God wants me to be a missionary. <laughs> just out of the blue. And today she is a missionary. She's yeah. uh, 34 years old and serves in the Amazon Basin. Four babies out there. And Tell a little bit about the work that they do. I think it's important to know. They live among the Shuar Indians. Uh, this, is, this group was originally known as the Hibaros, which are the original um, head shrinkers. If you hear of head shrinkers, we all have, I guess, that's where they're from. Hivaro Indians, and um, they live and work among the Hivaros in the Amazon Basin of Ecuador. Now, isn't this also a group that's connected to, if not the same as the group that Jim Elliott's life was taken? Right. Nate Saint, Jim Elliott are the two most famous of the five that were martyred back in the 50s. Uh, they, they're cousins. They're just across the river. Okay. Uh-huh. One, the, it's the Napo River, and across that river are the... Um, the, the, the Shuar Indians on one side and the Warani are on the other side. Yeah. Give sure. a little more detail about what they're doing because I don't know, you know, you, a lot of times you hear about missionaries, but uh, this, this couple, this family, uh, you know, you hear about people going to the jungle. Well, they literally have gone to the jungle. They, they do. Um, I invite you to go to um, junglemissionary.com. Com. I believe it is. <laughs> junglemissionary.com that's their their website uh, and they they're reaching into the Shuar S-H-U-A-R nation uh, they have about 50 plus church plants now and um, and in many of these places uh, you're in canoes for two or three days to get to those places uh, places uh, or you arrive in places that uh, have never seen a white face before and uh, uh, and dress and live very primitively. Uh, they also have works that are uh, still among the Shuar Indians that are closer uh, to the mountains and they uh, have more uh, access to um, uh, modern culture. Uh, so uh, they also have a girls' home. Uh, they take these uh, young Shuar girls who have been abandoned or uh, abused um, uh, sometimes homeless, um, and they live in a home setting. Uh, they have uh, 26 girls in this home, and uh, and it's a w it is just beautiful uh, to see these girls and going to school and learning a trade and coming to Christ. It's I, I mean it's Kevin it's the uh, Robin it's it's truly the 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 salvaging of lives. It's just, it's just amazing. And that's what it's about. It is. That's what the gospel's about. It is. It sure is. So it's wonderful. Yeah, our, you know, uh, mission life is no, really no different. It's, it's just life in another context. Uh, however, I have to admit, uh, when I said earlier that I, I wasn't sure, I couldn't find why I existed, why I, I know why I exist today, you know, and I, we, we have a, very much have a purpose and reason to what we do. And, and, and I guess back to that same idea that uh, it has given us a reason to live and, and, and if it calls for it, uh, a reason to die, ready to do it. It's just worth it. Yeah. Hey Amen. Well, let's not fail to mention your son, Seth. He was actually born <laughs> yeah, he, on the field. Yeah, well, he was uh, the, the uh, uh, yeah, he was conceived in Ecuador. He hates me to say that, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was actually born uh, in Louisville because of some uh, medical time. complications of the family issues, not really ours. Um, and, uh, but he is a, uh, he's a pilot and um, is uh, preparing to go back to the Amazon bush to fly uh, there in the bush as a missionary pilot. Yeah. Very proud of him. Well, we, we thank God for what he's done in your family. What well, an incredible you, thing. And we're talking about families and marriage today. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'm going to share with you 
my favorite number one scripture for a successful marriage. It's not one that you're probably thinking of, but I believe this scripture holds the key that can help your marriage and your family as much or more than any other scripture in the Bible. So I want you to stay tuned, and then we'll be talking about some questions that have come in, and we'll do some rapid-fire discussion over those before we close out the broadcast praying over your needs. So give us a call right now, 502-962-9650, or toll-free, 888-613-6080. We'll be right back. There's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet Sing on that beautiful song The melodious song of the blessed And our spirits will sorrow no more Not a sigh for the blessings of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet Father of love, we will offer our tribute of praise and the glorious gifts of His love and the blessings that hallow our day in the sweet. We're back and we're welcoming your calls. We're going to be praying over the needs that are called in here in just a few moments. Before the break, I told you I was going to share what I believe to be the most important scripture in regard to a successful marriage. And it might not be something that you would normally think of, but it's found in Ephesians chapter 4, and it's the last verse of that chapter, verse 32. And it's speaking not necessarily in the context of marriage, but in general relationships and in life and it says this and be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you I've had the privilege of sitting and talking with countless couples I, I don't I've lost count really uh, in in those that are preparing for marriage they're working up to the time when they would have their weddings and so forth. And then those that have already been married, married that are having some trouble. And Bill, I know the same is true for you. And Robin, I know you get called on a lot of times, especially wives who want to call and counsel with you to talk about you know, their situation and how to see that healed. And just by way of observation over the years, thinking about, praying about what what would really make a marriage successful or what could heal this marriage it comes to me to this verse right here where it says the four-letter word kind be 
kind to one another. Wow. The simple word, and you could either use kind or you could say show kindness, um, truly exemplifies what I believe can cause a marriage to gel and to be strong because that simple word that we we think of and just relationship with people all over when applied within the marriage speaks of some high values uh, well in fact using the word value it shows your spouse that you value them mm -hmm. you show them respect because you're willing to make the effort to be kind to them you know what I've noticed is a lot of times when couples get married you know, there's leading up to the marriage, there's all kinds of kindness. You know, you know, both the man and the woman are on their A behavior and just doing everything they can to win the heart of that beloved. And they're doing all the right things, saying all the right things, but sometimes when they say, I do, it's like, <sighs> especially for the man, I've conquered, I've, I've accomplished the goal. And it's like all of a sudden, within a short period of time, some of those same courtesies are not extended, some of those same soft words of kindness are not given, uh, comments become shorter, quicker, and before long, it's even possible that couples are saying mean and hateful things to one another that they never would have dreamed of, but because they somehow feel the comfort of being in that bond, they think, well, you know, I don't have to use all those courtesies and precautions like I once used because we're married mm -hmm. and that's where your problem comes in because when you start treating the most uh, beloved person of your life the one who should be your closest bond not only and this is where people so mistakenly think of marriage as a contract our society uses a marriage license and so yes it does seem like contract because they're signing but marriage is a covenant and it's a commitment to care for the very best interest of each other uh, Robin and I teased many times and said we're a team you know I'm for you not against you and it, it's that concept that we care most about each other and, uh, and I'm I've been very transparent and Robin could testify sometimes you know when stressed and pressured and that I'm not as cautious maybe as I should be I'm not as careful with my words as I should be but the truth is I have that knowledge and know that that is the way to most lift her up and value her is to show kindness mm -hmm. And that simple truth is true with your wife, your spouse, your children. Because a lot of times the people we feel we can be most careless with are the ones that are closest to us. And it's a terrible mistake because it begins to erode the commitment, the relationship. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, someone said, and I truly believe this, the, the, the one minute, the most important minute of the, of the, the day is that minute before you walk through the front door is that you prepare yourself uh, for that entrance and I'm going to I make up my mind that I'm going to enter I'm going to go into this uh, home uh, a very kind person and and putting other issues aside and I'm going to take time to hug on everybody and kiss everybody and that just prepares the way uh, that, that just so before you walk through the door just stop and think okay I'm making the decision now to be kind and to love my family. It changes everything, Kevin. Just some, I call it a tune-up. It's just a <laughs> tune-up. Most marriages are, are Mercedes-Benz running around with a flat tire. And they're great things we have. They're wonderful things, but they're not quite uh, working well because of some minor issues, really. If we could adjust a few things, oh, it would be so much better. And when you're showing kindness, it also is a reminder not to take each other for granted mm -hmm. uh, because there's so much that happens within a family and so often it's, it's easy to focus on the negative and to criticize and who doesn't have some shortcomings in their life, who doesn't make a mistake down, now and then, but if we'll remember the high value and the prize 
of our spouse and our children and, and how special they are and treat them accordingly, mm -hmm. then we're going to, yes. to get that, that kind of response within our families. That's right, absolutely. And that's, what, that's what's going to help and make a difference. And some of you say, oh, that, that's so simple and that sounds good. Listen, I, I challenge you to try it. That's right. I challenge you to do just what Bill said. Uh, when you make your entrance into your home where your family is, pause before you do it. Think about it. Kind of take that breath and release it and shake off the pressures of your day, the problems you've been going through. And then go in determined to be kind and loving first. You can deal, you got to deal with things and, and, and approach it, but it'll change the whole dynamic and make a big difference. And having fun in marriage too, which we're both in the uh, ministry, so we work together. So that's sometimes that carries on into our when we walk through the door. That we're still in work mode and ministry mode, and sometimes we just have to say we're not going to talk about it anymore. Let's go do something. Let's go to dinner. Let's go out. Let's go for a walk. But making fun in the marriage is a vital point too for a happy marriage. Yeah, laugh together. Yep. <laughs> Don't just laugh at each other. <laughs> though. I mean, you know. <laughs> laugh with each other. Uh, it's, it's great. It's one of the things we most enjoy about our family time yes. is there's a lot of laughter, yes. a, lot of, a lot of fun cutting up going on. And so yeah. uh, we encourage that and we encourage you to do the same. And I feel like there's those who are watching and yeah, you're having a hard time even wrapping your head around this simple concept because you're so pressured. There's been so many harsh words spoken between you and your spouse, and maybe you and your children, and uh, there's so many hurt feelings, and that brings us to the other part of that verse that says forgiving. Mm -hmm. Wow, what an incredible healing device in any relationship, but especially in marriage, where you choose to forgive. You make a decision. You say, well, I can't forget what they did to me or what was said. And, and by the way, be careful about the words you speak because Words are very penetrating and they're very lasting. And so it's important to take the opportunity uh, when there is an offense to say, I choose to forgive and release it. It's a step of faith. And what happens is God comes into that situation and takes the sting out. Uh, it doesn't mean that you'll necessarily forget what was done or said, but you'll have the the pain of that will begin to be healed and removed and you can move forward in the relationship without it being jilted by the offense when the offense is there it's jilted it's turned in a way that you can't really deal like a socket wrench coming down on a bolt if it's cocked the wrong way it's not going to fit it's not going to accomplish the task you're not going to get the grip on it that you need and and that's how it is in dealing in relationships. You have to get those offenses off so it's not jilted, it's not twisted, and you can approach things in an even-handed way, a way that can bring about healing to that situation. It's uh, the power of, of letting go, uh, and, and it's not, not easy. But uh, there's a, you may have seen documentaries of how um, they have captured uh, monkeys by putting uh, food uh, into a container that has a very small opening. The monkey reaches his hand into the container, grabs hold of the prize, then he cannot get out of that until he releases his prize or his food. And uh, sadly, um, monkeys, because of their innate greed, uh, will not let go of that, even to their own detriment. And many times we just hang on to things that have us entrapped. And for, uh, forgiveness is the way of just uh, letting go. And it's not that um, I, 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 I'm doing anything for you when I forgive you. I'm doing it for me. And so I forgive uh, because uh, it releases me. Not that I'm necessarily releasing you of uh, some debt, but I'm releasing myself of that, that, that weight. And, uh, and it's very powerful to do it with your words. Whether you tell a person who has offended you, I forgive you, if they've asked for it. I don't recommend forgiving people who haven't asked for forgiveness. That could even cause more problems. Um, by the way, I forgive you. Uh, and Or um, you can say it uh, to the Lord. 
Lord, I forgive such and such person. And so that's a letting go, and, uh, and it gives us the opportunity then to live free of that weight. Well, our time is just about gone. Bill, thanks so much for coming. And well, I'm sorry to, 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 to barge in on your little marriage thing here, guys. Oh, this it, is it, it kept us on an even yeah. But Maybe if you got time later, you could counsel us. And we could. Uh, well, we're going to pray over these requests, and uh, time doesn't permit us to read them all, but if you all just join with me, let's agree together. Father, in the name of Jesus. We lift every person up that has been mentioned in these requests and those that have called on their behalf. And we pray, Lord, for families. We pray, God, for healing. We pray needs will be met and lives mended through the love of Jesus and the power of your name. God, we bless you. We pray that oppression will be lifted. Joy will fill hearts and peace of mind will come to them. And we thank you for it, Lord, and give you the glory. Amen. Well, we appreciate your calls and want to encourage you. You still have time if you'd like to call and pray with a prayer partner. The opportunity is there to do so. Tomorrow's broadcast, don't miss it. Tomorrow is going to be a live broadcast. It's going to come from Evangel North, Evangel North Church over in Clarksville, where they are preparing for a special seasonal dramatic presentation called The Damned. And it's going to be something quite shocking. I just encourage you. And you're going to be there on site to get a little glimpse of what's coming up and how uh, you can be a part of something that will impact that city. And I encourage you to do so. And then don't forget we have church tonight right here at our Miners Lane campus, 7 o'clock. We hope you'll come out and worship with us. It's going to be a great evening. And then we're going to have this weekend where we'll have Billy Burke with us and then all the other things. If you didn't get all the details of our schedule, just go to our website, worldprayercenter.org, and you can find out everything you need to know about all the upcoming events. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon, right here on Word Alive. Word Alive is a production of Bob Rogers Ministries in Louisville, Kentucky. For more information on the outreach of this ministry or to become a partner, visit bobrogersministries.org. And remember to like us on Facebook and Ustream. Just search TV Word Alive.